Good day, fellow investors. Now, I have been mentioning here and there that I think real estate, even now, is a great risk-reward investment. However, a lot of the comments are, what if interest rates go up? What if real estate prices fall? And that's the key reason behind this video. There is a huge difference between investing in real estate and speculating in real estate. When investing, you look at what is your investment and what is your return on investment, coming from the cash flows from the real estate and so on. When you speculate, you look at current real estate prices and then hope that it will go up 5, 10, 20 percent in the next few years. Then what are you going to do? Sell or be afraid that it will fall? So it's a terrible way to look at real estate. And I think the speculation part, the behavioral part, really deters investors from looking at real estate now. Because real estate prices have surged in the past and it's immediately a bubble, don't invest. However, if you look at it from an investing perspective, you will see what are the benefits of diversifying your wealth, your portfolio with real estate. I'll first show a financial example of what does investing in real estate mean and then I'll go through five tips on how to find good real estate investments that I have applied to my investment and it works very well for now. All right, finances. As we are value investors, we always look to find an investment that has a lot of value with a margin of safety so that we can't lose much but the upside remains unlimited. So that's the essence of a value investor. Now, if you take cash and if you invest in real estate, the return on that cash is small. However, I found extreme value in mortgages because of their extremely low historical interest rates. Interest rates haven't been so low in the past 500 years. So as value investors, we should take advantage of the historically low mortgages. Now, I know the question will be, what happens if interest rates r rise? Your mortgage will be fixed and your tenant rents will rise. Or, or even if real estate prices fall because of higher interest rates, the rent the tenants are paying will remain the same because it will always be in relation to uh, the yield on investment. So higher interest rates, it means also higher rent yields on the price. So you are always covered there. Your main concern as an investor is to cover for the mortgage payments. That's it. So if you find an investment, a real estate property that has sufficient cash flows to cover for the mortgage payments over the long term, then you're set. Then that's a good investment and that will lead to amazing returns in the long term with low risk. No matter what happens in the short time with real estate prices, no matter what happens with interest rates, no matter what happens with inflation. So you try to protect yourself first, as always. If I look at current mortgage rates for an investment property, they are around 4%, 4.5% in Europe, 4% in the US, so extremely low. So the point is to find real estate properties that will cover for both the repayment of the principal and the interest rate. Thus, we are looking somewhere at the 5.56% yield from real estate, which is very possible. If I look at the median price in Boston is 561,000, while the median rent is 2,700, which is a 5.7% yield, which is enough to cover a 4% mortgage with a 20% down payment. So let's look at the finances. To buy the median price in Boston of $561,400, you need a mortgage of $450,000 with a 20% down payment of $112,000. At 4% fixed interest rate 30-year mortgage, the payment would be around $2,150, which is lower than the $2,700. Let's estimate there are some additional costs you have to cover for the vacancy months that will inevitably come here and there, refurbishment. So let's say you don't even make a cent per month on the investment. In 40 years, you just repay your mortgage. So you invested 112,000 as a down payment and after 30 years, even if home prices don't move, don't go anywhere, you get a 561,000 property 
100% owned. So the investment is just north of 5% per year, which is not bad. Now let's imagine that real estate prices double in the next 30 years. Will they double? Well, if inflation is around 2%, then you can expect real estate prices to double in the next 30 years. That's the minimum. If there will be higher inflation, which is a possibility, I'm talking about three decades here, and in the three decades, you still get your fixed mortgage rate. So if real estate prices double in the next 30 years, the 560,000 home in Boston becomes a 1.1 million home in Boston, while your mortgage payment is still the same, and it becomes an 8% return over 30 years. And this not even calculating the increases in rent alongside inflation. The funny thing is that after 30 years, let's say rent also doubles, then you get a 64,800 rent income per year or a yearly 54% return on your down payment. This is how investing in real estate works. I don't care what will happen with prices in the next few months, in the next year. All I care is that I have tenants in my apartment that pay for part or most of my mortgage. So that's investing, that's it. Let's go on the five tips that I want to share with you that might make you find it easier to invest in real estate. The first thing, there is a difference between investing in real estate and stocks. Because when you invest in stocks, most of your competition is from speculators. Everybody looks at prices go up and down, prices are very volatile. When you invest in real estate, your competition comes from people that buy their homes to live. Thus, it is very interesting how that works. When prices go up, they rush to buy in fear that prices don't go higher. When prices fall, real estate prices fall, everybody is scared to buy because they are in fear of buying and seeing prices go even lower. Because even these people that are concerned in buying their home are always speculators. Everybody loves speculating in real estate. So take advantage of their behavioral fallacies, running into a hot market and going away from a falling market when foreclosures make those who took too high mortgages sell. So when you can buy in foreclosures, really look and dig deep into that because you might find real bargains. Secondly, and the most important thing with real estate, which is today very difficult to find with stocks, real estate still have a moat. You cannot increase the number of apartments in historical town centers. You cannot increase the number of beachfront properties in that cool area that you, everybody likes. So a lot of real estate has really a moat and that's what you need to look when investing in real estate. Don't look at hot trendy spots or something like that. Look at real estate with a moat where the rent will cover your mortgage rate. Even if it's a little bit more expensive than the cheapest real estate there with the highest yield, look for real estates with a moat. Old houses that cannot be destroyed, old neighborhoods that have to look like that for the next 200 years will always have their appeal because those can be replicated and demand will grow, grow, grow. So, so you have fixed supply and growth in demand. The best investment opportunity there is. Always look for a moat. Number three, stocks, we like to see a bit what's going on, invest, put our money, see what happens, take our money out and, and then redo the same process. With real estate, you have to invest a lot of time in the beginning, a lot of time in research. You have to turn around 500,000 real estates to find a few interesting properties on which you will make an offer. And then on that offer, perhaps one will be accepted because your offer will be ridiculously low. That's how you invest in real estate. And then you have to, okay, manage. So you have to put some effort constantly over the long time, but there is no more excitement. However, people usually look at two free real estate properties and then they invest. I, when I bought my last real estate properties for one year, I have looked approximately at 50, 60 real estate properties per day online. And then me and my wife, thankfully she was helping with that, 
we looked at about 10 properties per week for about eight months and we found three, we made three offers, one was, to my surprise, accepted. And that's how we found our real estate bargain. So really dig into research before buying. Learn about the market, learn everything you can know about the specific local market where you think there is a mode, a long-term mode, and where the rent covers your mortgage. Then you are really investing for the long term. You buy once and you forget about it for the next 50 years. Number four, what I showed you about Boston there were median prices. And as we have learned in our video about Extremistan and Mediocristan, the median statistic is made of large differences. There are different prices, different real estate properties. So really try to distance yourself from the median by buying below the median price with a higher rent. Always with the moat and everything. With a lot of effort, you can save yourself a little bit of capital in the beginning and have a higher yield, a higher rent. There are some kinds of properties that yield better yields or give more stability and so on and so that's all you will research if you follow the previous tip so the more research you do you really have to be an expert on the area you are researching in. you need a few months to become an expert but it is worth it you will see later why just on a financial example let's say we lower the price of the property from 560,000 in Boston to 500,000 and we find it with a higher rent of 3000 Now the monthly payment for the mortgage is 1900 and the rent is 1100 above that. Thus, when we add the cost, we might even get a $500 per month cash return on the investment or 6% on the down payment. Add the 6% on the already above mentioned inflationary 8% which is really to be expected that house prices double in the next 30 years and you find yourself with a 14% annual return that will probably only increase with higher rents. So 14% return from real estate with let's say low risk. I find it one of the best opportunities the current market offers. However you really have to put a lot of effort into investing in such a thing. It takes, uh, as I said, research, maintenance, landlording, tenants and everything involved with that. However, it really pays. With a small down payment, you can provide yourself passive income for the rest of your life. So really think about it. Number five to conclude, don't speculate with real estate. You hear a lot of stories of people that speculated with real estate. Some do good, some do, get, do bad. But when you invest in real estate, that's a completely different story. Don't take credit card debt to pay for the down payment. That's crazy and that's speculating. Always keep a margin of safety so that no matter what happens, you can always pay the mortgage, even if the vacancy is a little bit longer than the average expected in the area. So really think about lowering your risk, keep your risk low and leaving that as an investment for the very, very long term. If you can reach a return of 14, 15%, it is much better than any stock will ever offer you. And with the current low mortgage rates, it is really possible to reach such a return. I'm talking about 14% per year growing alongside the growing rents and fixed costs over the next 50 years. So imagine what would a part of your portfolio de-risk because it's in real estate returning 15% per year due to your financial well-being in comparison to what you are doing now or what you have been doing in the last 2, 3, 5, 10 years with stocks depending on how much you are investing. That's my message for today. Really think about diversification. That doesn't have to happen now as you're probably following this channel and you will make a lot of money on stocks in the next year, 2, 3 years. You can also diversify when you have enough for a down payment. However, I would really advise to diversify from stocks when you make a lot of money on stocks into something stable that will bring you yield, a cash flow and passive income because you never know what can happen to stocks. And even if stocks double in the next three years, 
you can lose 80% like that in a market crisis. And I'm really looking forward to the comments about speculating and investing. How do you feel about investing in real estate if stock prices fall, let's say, in the next two, three years? And do you think that that fear of stock pro of real estate prices falling, sorry, hinders you in making investment diversified, rational decisions for your portfolio? Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. What's good, YouTube? All knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Just damn all everything. The sexy as hell host. And we're bringing you guys life game financial. I got my notebook here with all the stuff that I've done in terms of real estate because I want you guys to be successful. Everybody can be an entrepreneur. Everybody technically is an entrepreneur. If you have money invested in the stock market, you're an entrepreneur and you don't even know it. One of the big ways people have gotten rich in this country, that I've even read where the number one way people have gotten rich is through real estate. Y'all know I love real estate. I own commercial real estate. I'm getting ready to sell a property that's going to make me and my wife a whole lot of money because we bought, we held, we flipped, we got a tenant in it, and now we're selling the building with the contract, which increased the value, and we're going to be doing well. And you guys can do the same thing. So I'm going to give you guys some of my best tips for real estate investing that'll help you avoid the crazy mistakes that I made. Number one, um, in real estate, it's about relationships. Yes, you do need money and all that other stuff, and we'll get to that in a second. But one thing you wanna do is create good relationships with the local people in your area. And when I say relationships, I mean you wanna find a good realtor who can help you find the right property or give you a property that pops up before everybody else gets a chance to see it. You want to have a good CPA that does real estate because they can teach you some of the advantages of having real estate and how that helps you leverage your taxes. You also are going to want to try to find a good property manager. That's just like your general manager of any other business. A good property manager makes life so much more easier. They've seen deals done over and over and over again. They can help you evaluate deals and they also help you build relationships with the people you need in your community. So build relationships. So let's just say right now you might not have money, your credit might not be good. Don't let that scare you. Start building relationships because at some point in time, even with all, even with bad credit and no money, you still might be able to get into it and we'll discuss that in a second. But number one, get out there, start seeing who are the movers and shakers in real estate and see if you can get on their radar. That's one of the things I did and it made a world of difference for me. Number two on my list, I want you guys to understand that used to be a business adage that location, location, location. That is a big thing in real estate. One thing that we did with one of our properties, we bought it when the community was kind of going down. But we knew within five years the city would start fixing up this particular community. We had seen city plans of where development was going to go at. So we bought the property very cheap, knowing that there was going to be putting Dollar Generals, um, shopping centers and all this stuff close to where our property was at. So my, that would be another tip that I would tell you guys. When you go looking for property, pick a place where you think or where you know the city is going to be putting business development. Go to some of those city meetings to see where development is going to go at. Go to your chamber of commerce. They can tell you where you can find where new businesses are planning to come, where they might be in the next year or so, and that can help you narrow your search down for where you want to get a property. Now, you could always buy in a depressed community, but your goal has got to be a little bit different. It's got to be specific. But those are good tips to do when you're trying to find a property. My next tip is, let's say that you're just totally afraid of getting into the game. Well, you now have these different apps such as Fundrise that allow you to, you know, it's kind of like um, crowdfunding for real estate if you don't have a lot of money. You know, their specific goal is to crowdfund for real estate properties and you can get involved with them with not a whole lot of money. They're a good site. I've read nothing but excellent reviews from them. So let, you can take that as a route to help fund some of your um, real estate that you're going to do as you're going forward. My next thing that I want you to know before you get into real estate is the tax advantages. Now, I'm not a CPA. I can just tell you from my personal experience of the things that I've done. 
but most rich people and people that are doing real estate use real estate as a tax shelter. And just think of it like this. Even if you have a great property and it's going up every single year, you also get to take tax depreciation on that property. Crazy, huh? And as your property is gaining value, you're still depreciating it. That's one of the, the things you get to do when you own real estate. Plus, just having a tangible asset, just having an asset you can go touch makes a big difference than having something that's paper, gold, stock markets, all that. Being able to know there's something you can go and see and put a tenant in there, make money. The tenant leaves, you still have an asset that can make you money. That helps me sleep at night and it will help you too once you can get the right pieces around you and get your team around you. So ladies and gentlemen, that is all the things I want you to think about before you get into real estate. Now having said that, you will have some bumps in the road. There's just nowhere around that. You might have a contractor that'll screw you. You might have a tenant that'll leave your property you know, vacant and mess up your property and all that. But overall, for the most part, your experience in real estate is gonna be a positive one if you just get in. When you've got your team of people around you to help you understand these pop-ups that might happen, it makes it a lot easier because you've got people around you that have been through this before and they can counsel to you on the best way to get through it. And even if you need some resources and networks, they can lend you their resources and networks. That's what I want you guys to know before you get into real estate. And if you want a coach to help you out, I'm here for you. I'm here trying to serve people. I'm trying to help y'all make those life gains in every area of your life so that you don't make the mistakes I did. And you can get hit me up online, www.facebook.com forward slash lifegains07. You can hit me on the email, however you want to hit me. If you want to team up and you want a coach to help you get through this thing, I'm here for you. You don't got to go to some bougie, scary, almost network marketing style meeting in somebody's hotel room and spend $10,000 to get a little real estate help. No, 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 you ain't got to do all that. You can hit me up, I'm very cheap, I'm like 30 bucks, and I can kind of connect you with the people that I know that have done right by me and give you my experience and see if we can't help you make those financial life gains in 2018. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe. Go out there and get yourself a life gain. Are you interested in buying a short sale? I got five big tips coming up. What's up guys, this is Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, real estate investors, real estate brokers grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. If you're not familiar with what a short sale is, it's basically the sale of a property which the net proceeds of the sale fall short of what is actually owed on the property. Now it's up to the bank and to their discretion if they're gonna allow a short sale. Now let's jump into the five big tips that you're gonna wanna know if you're gonna be buying a short sale property. Number one, and probably one of the biggest, is there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee that you're gonna be entitled to buying that short sale property, even with a fully executed contract between you and the seller. Unlike a traditional sale, the seller's lender does not have to allow and approve the short sale to happen. And in some cases, that property could end up in foreclosure, depending on how far along the bank is with the foreclosure proceedings. Or in other cases, the seller might have temporary financial issues and might be able to get that mortgage whole and essentially cancel the short sale altogether. And in most cases, the seller does have an out if that were the case. Number two is you're gonna to wanna to know the status of the short sale. This is where if you are working with you know, your real estate agent, your real estate professional, they should be familiar with the short sale process, hopefully that they are, and they're gonna to wanna to know the, the status of the short sale. So that's contacting the listing agent, and hopefully the listing agent has some experience in dealing with short sales. So you're gonna to wanna to contact that listing agent and find out exactly where they're at with the short sale process. Uh, find out if they have uh, completed a short sale package for the bank and all that intel and information is ready to be submitted to the bank with an offer. Also find out where they're at with foreclosure proceedings. Has there been a Liz Penance filed? And 
and ultimately, is there a final order for foreclosure? And if there is, does the seller uh, has the seller retained an attorney to basically delay that in order for the short sale to proceed? Number three is time frame. You gotta understand, short sales are not like a traditional sale. It could take four to six months. Sometimes it could happen sooner. Sometimes it could happen much later. I've had certain for, uh, short sale listings go as long as a year, even 16, 18 months. So if you're a real estate agent working with a buyer, you're gonna wanna make sure that that buyer is prepared to wait for the long term. Also, if you're a buyer, you're gonna really want to find out about opportunity costs. Yes, in most cases, you can get the short sale uh, slightly discounted, sometimes eight to 10%. You do wanna make the buyer aware that there is gonna be a four to six month period and there could be certain missed opportunities out there with other properties that come on market. Now, if this short sale is a property that is kind of rare and there's not a whole lot of properties that come to market in a certain neighborhood or whatever the case is, then yes, this might be the ideal scenario. Number four is escrow. So most listing agents as well as sellers of the short sale wanna ensure that the buyer is serious and in most cases, you're gonna to have to submit um, an escrow deposit along with the contract. My suggestion to you as a buyer is try to get away with as little money down as possible uh, to secure that property for escrow. And then in the contract, put maybe a second deposit after the short sale has been approved and you have it in writing that you guys are proceeding, more, uh, proceeding toward uh, a successful closing and then you go ahead and submit that second deposit. And number five, price. Just because you and the seller have agreed on a contract terms and a price doesn't mean that that short sale lender is actually gonna agree to that price. They're gonna go ahead and order what's called a BPO, broker's price opinion, to get an idea of value. Uh, sometimes they even order an appraisal. And if your offer is usually within eight to 10% of that valuation, many times, the short sale negotiator is going to approve that contract, approve that sale, but you're not guaranteed that. You might have a short sale negotiator that is instructed by the lender to strictly only look at offers that are based on that valuation from the BPO or appraisal. So again, you, you might come in with a contract of 400,000 and that BPO might come in at 450,000 and that short sale negotiator just flat out says, no, they're not gonna take that $400,000 $400, offer. So you may wait four, six, eight months to finally get a response from the lender and get the valuation, only to find out that you're not gonna proceed forward with the, the purchase of it because it doesn't make sense at a certain price that, uh, that, the, that the bank came back with. And as a listing agent for many, many short sale properties, I can tell you there are some short sale negotiators out there that will stay firm on whatever that value comes out and only to realize that they've lost one or two buyers and then as the um, listing agent for the short sale, we have to go back to that short sale negotiator and just explain, look, nobody's buying this property. That is just one opinion of value that you got. Um, but we're gonna keep losing buyers if we're gonna stick at this, at this specific price that you guys came up with. So if you are a real estate agent, you're interested in listing and selling short sale properties, I'm gonna put a link down below for another video that I have on exactly how to go about it, uh, exactly what to do, how to find people who are upside down or who have defaulted on their mortgages and how you can help hundreds and hundreds of people avoid foreclosures. So check out that link below and we'll see you on the next video. I appreciate it.